We're all screwed as parents right now, unless you are very well prepared to deal with the specter of teaching young Jimmy or young Jenny at home. Right now, I have an 11 o'clock appointment every day, every morning, Monday through Friday, to teach my youngest son chemistry from my old college textbook. <laughs> How's it going? It's not for me to say. I can hammer chemistry in the motherfucker head. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm doing it right. And hence, Dr. Maurice Stolberry, enlighten me and the world on what we need to be doing or be looking out for in this time of challenges at home. Let me let, let's let's start with with where you came from, which is where most parents came from. And so <clears throat> so a lot of us who came, you know, through uh, alumni roundup dot com, you know, we got connected through there. They found out about this podcast through there. You know, uh, we got we got connected a few years back. And so now we're people who are consistently college educated generation X black folks. True. And the emphasis, though, being on college educated and generation X. And one of the things about college educated folks is we tend to be good at school. So, for example, you know, chemistry really well. That don't mean you can teach it worth a damn. You right. can do it. But your ability to teach it is is I've never I've never taught totally. that I never taught science before. Right. 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 Which means you're good at chemistry and you can demonstrate how good you are at chemistry, but that doesn't mean that your child is learning. Right. True indeed. I asked him today, I said, this is at dinner time. So we're twelve hour or ten hours from the time of the first, of the lesson today. And I said, Hey man, so how how do you think chemistry's going? Gave me a one word answer. Toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the here's one of the things that's happening. So there have been a lot of jokes on social media, well earned jokes coming from those of us who are in the education community speaking to parents who are attempting to educate, who are attempting to teach their kids now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people are learning is well, shit, teaching's hard. Yeah. We give a lot of platitudes about teaching. Oh, it's the, 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 what's it? The most the noble profession, job, and, but yeah. the most important, the noble profession. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Try actually doing it because you're at home with two, in, the, in your case, you're at home with two teenagers. Mm -hmm. How about 30 of them? And, and not just for the couple of weeks that we might be, or even if we're out of school for a month and see at any point, you can just say, hey, let's go in the kitchen, get some ice cream, just sit down. Or lady, let's break out the video game controller and let's fire up the Xbox. We can't do that, man. Mm -hmm. We got to be with that knucklehead from <laughs> from August through September. But that's not even the and thing, because le I'm less likely to actually do something nice like you're talking about and more likely to throw my body across the table or, and throw my hands around somebody's neck, which you can't do either. Right. Right. And as teachers, you can't do that. Right. Not only can you not do that, but there are five other kids over there who are doing the exact same thing. Mm. So you got to manage all of that for 180 days out the year. Right. So toxic is probably a great <laughs> way to describe how not just you, right, but how most parents are experiencing this, their inability to educate their kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that so so as someone who's not a parent, let me say very clearly, I don't know about raising kids. I can't speak to raising kids from a personal perspective. I definitely know a lot about teaching and I've probably interacted more with more kids than people Most who parents. are parents who of right. course are not educators, right? And Parents do a phenomenal job in their children's formative years, almost across the board, in helping kids learn how to walk, talk, engage with people, make sense of the world. And you get a really huge bump and boost in the fact that a baby's mind, a toddler's mind, an infant's mind, a toddler's mind, they're the most malleable. You can learn the most at that point in your life, your brain, when they talk about kids or sponges, right? it's even greater than that, man. Kids are, kids are vast oceans. You can't put 
enough in there mm. that they can't absorb and begin to understand in some way. So you get that boost. But when you're trying to teach scholastic information, chemistry, times tables, handwriting, it's different, man. It's a different skill set. It's a skill set most parents don't have. Sounds like we should have been teaching all that around three years old when they still had all the, the malleable juice. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> Before a great they firmed time up. To, right. Well, it's a great time for them to learn. It's a great time for them to learn, but they're limited in the in the details, right? They're limited in the in the depth mm. to which they can go. They can understand math. And they can understand mathematic principles and they can understand mathematic principles in some really complex ways. But you're not going to be able to teach the average three year old calculus. Right. OK. So their ability to 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 understand and make sense of mathematical concepts is it's is at its greatest at that age. Hmm. However, when they're 13, their desire to learn mathematical concepts, especially from your ass. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're no longer that most fascinating, powerful mom, dad right, character, right, like right, right. just the most brilliant motherfucker in the universe. Now you're that asshole who is <laughs> in the way of my progress as a 13 year old. Like, cause I get it. When I'm 13, when I turned 13, 14 years old, I had the world figured out. Mm hmm. And my parents were these two jackasses who, thankfully, they paid the bills, but right. they didn't really understand the world as well as I did. Right. So there's no way they could teach me anything. I can't imagine if I had been quarantined with my parents at 13. <laughs> I wouldn't be here today. I'd have been dead. They'd have been happy and childless. And I was the only child. And I can tell you, they'd be like, nah, mm, we ain't even going to do it again. <laughs> two, weeks at, two weeks at home with him? Nah, we good. Mm. <laughs> freaking ridiculous i hope they listen to every episode they do oh they do they do and you know you can tell them you can ask them you can text them right now hey would you have killed reason he was a kid yeah we'd have killed him i'd have killed him and, and, and wouldn't have made another one you know you know what gary would say right for real that's ridiculous yep. so what do we need to be doing like okay school me you have you haven't seen my session because i think i think my sessions are pretty good but we're only on day two going on day three and I've started at, you know, I went to the book. I'm just covering the book, brother. That's it. But I know that uh, this ain't going to be as mid-range as it is right now. I don't even say easy. What do I need to know? I'd say the, the, the first thing is to understand that your communication and, and the way that you go about communicating is so dr drastically different than the way that your kids go about communicating, especially when you're talking about technology. Mm -hmm. There are people now, and on the other end, my colleagues now and my peers in, in education, many of whom, for example, teach at the college level, are now attempting to do online learning. And so it's the same, you're the same person now where, look, we have a certain age, when you pick your phone up and you do like this, <laughs> And the, and the words back. on there, it's right. big, you know, because because your vision bad and everything else. Understand the way that they communicate and the way that it is inextricably linked and enmeshed with technology means when you sit down, as because as soon as you walk up to your child with pencil and paper, immediately you put them in the mindset of school. So my roundabout way is saying, take them out of the mindset of school. Instead of starting with the book and immediately triggering all of these things that happen in a classroom, now I have to sit down for 48 minutes. Now I have to listen to this person speak for 48 minutes while my best friends are all sitting around me and I can't say anything to them unless we got group work I can pretend to do while I goof off. <laughs> Take them outside of that mindset of school and all of the all the things that happen in school that are negative, right? And that and that give our kids negative feelings right? right and take all those things away take all those things away and strip things down right if you can go back as a parent and consider how you taught your kids how to read or write uh you know how did you teach them language you did it much more organically so take a concept in chemistry 
and find a way to teach it in a way that's not based on the book, right? So, so take a, in, in fact, I, it, so you you brought up science and science, of course, my area of expertise. One of the most important things, in fact, the only important thing about science, and I say this all the time, as I know I'm being long-winded, I say this all the time as a science teacher, and, and in particular as, as someone who taught biology, every bit of my content is trivia. There's not a single person listening to this podcast or watching this podcast who needs to know the dark reactions of the Krebs cycle and how a proton is added to NADP to make NADPH in the electron transport chain. You learned that in ninth grade. Every single one of you who went to high school in the United States, you learned that at some point, but mm -hmm. you don't remember it because it's useless trivia. What's important is how you reify or how you understand and make sense of the world. How do you question and think scientifically? So I would say, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you well, there's still something. a test. And you're going to sure. put that, you're going to put that trivia on the test. For sure. For sure. But, and this is, and this is one of the things that, that, that folks miss. When you teach someone how to think scientifically and you teach them to be scientifically literate and you challenge and push and foment their scientific literacy, it actually makes the ability, it makes the, it enhances their ability to complete and answer problems on a test because they understand what that problem is asking. And they have some sort of tool and toolbox that they can go to, both of which are gonna help them actually answer questions on the test, right? So when they, and they're stuck, in times that they don't remember the specific content, they can go back to having a basic understanding of chemistry and they can push themselves forward. It's the sticking points that where they get lost and it's practicing that thinking, getting past the sticking point. Well, how right? do, what about some of the things that are just data, like formulas? Like there still has to be some rote memorization of the formula. Otherwise, you're formula -less. So the important so the important thing there, and that's that's key to science in particular and science mindedness, it's not the formula itself, it's the tasks or the different memory tools, mnemonic devices. However, you have chosen to learn and memorize those formulae, right? So if you if you use mnemonic devices, and the mnemonic device for those who remember, uh mnemonic device that everyone remembers, um PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally for order of operations in math, right? P E M D A S. Okay. You you don't remember PEMDAS? Nope, keep going. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Continue. In biology, you learn uh King Philip came over for great spaghetti. Nerd. Or kings play chess on fiberglass stools. That's phyletic taxonomy. Kingdom phylum class order family genus species. That's how you long. classify. Look, but 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 it's not you don't have to remember that genus comes before species. It's do you have a mnemonic device? Okay. So teaching kids how to use mnemonic devices is important. We we use we use mnemonics all the time, right? Right. Uh, you know, and we sometimes they're words, sometimes they're not, right? NASA, NBA, mm -hmm. uh, NHL. You know, those are those are uh, those are not abbreviations, right? Those are mnemonic acronyms. devices. Okay. Yeah, they're acronyms. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so teaching, so teaching kids to, you know, to use mnemonic devices. That's a simple one. Um, but th that's one thing that that you can do that is going to, uh, you know, that's that's going to help them out. So you're pushing context over content. That is your key right there as a parent, because the reality is you are probably good at remembering the content. And you might even be good at problem, at, at answering questions, but your ability as a parent to teach them how to do it is going to be severely limited hmm. when you don't have a background in education. Doesn't mean you can't do it. And let me be very clear. There are people, there are people who are parents who are not educators who are doing phenomenal things with their kids. There's a whole rack of people who are not doing phenomenal things. <laughs> hey, boring the shit. You are you are every terrible, boring ass teacher you ever had, all wrapped in together, and now you are bombarding your child or children with 
all of the crappy ways that you learn hmm. in your own head. Look, I got something for I got something for for any parent. And I always challenge like because kids come home now with new math and right. the new common core math. Boy, you you want to talk about getting people's heads explode. Talk about some common core math. I've worked with common core for a long time. I have my problems with common core conceptually. However, at its premise, common core is about teaching kids to be mathematically literate. There's a difference between being a mathematician and simply being mathematically literate, right? As an example, you teach kid four times three, that's 12. Okay. Right. Three times four, that's 12. You got the answer, period. But being mathematically literate means you know that there's a difference between four times three and three times four. Here's an example. You're in the car. There's four of you in the car. You go to the drive-thru, talking to a nutritionist. Let's say that it's a drive-thru at a very healthy heating, eating establishment, <laughs> right? You go to the drive-thru. There's four people. Each of you orders a meal. That meal has three things. It's got the main dish or entree or sandwich or salad. It's got its side and it's got a drink. Okay. Now, you can figure out, okay, there's four people. Each of them get those, those three things, right? Mm -hmm. If the you go through the drive-thru, the person <laughs> in the drive-thru puts all of that shit in three different bags and says, here, just sort it all out, right? Right. You got four now meals. four things in three bags. There you go. Right. Because three times four is not the same thing as four times three, right? So, oh, now we got to dig through. Very simple. And yes, can you, of course, take in a handout, but- that's the difference because the motherfucker who gave you the bag that gave you three bags and four people in the car is the same one who learned that four times three and three times four is just 12. Just put all 12 of them things Here's the in pushback. whatever you got and shove it into the car. And hit, and, and let me finish this before you get because yep. the thing is when you are mathematically literate, it means that you have an understanding of not just – what number to put down when you see a three, a X, and a four, or a four, a X, and a three, but you actually understand the concept of three times four. Right. That's important. Yeah. My pushback is you're, to me, telling me teach the kid in a way that fosters understanding. Am I reading that correctly? Sure. And functional usage of things, functional knowledge. Of these concepts, correct? Maybe, maybe. Okay. It may not be functional, but 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 but, but go ahead. And you're even saying things like, you know, change the context, pull out the pull out the Xbox controller, da 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 da, all that. But eventually, he's going to leave. He or she's going to leave here and go back into that sterile or however, polluted, however you want to call it, classroom environment to be tested, without the advantage of the context that we created in Willy Wonka's educational factory at the house. For sure. So For how sure. does that translate? It does because you're working with the core understanding. Leave the content specifics to the experts, the teachers who are going to get them back at some point once we're done with all this. Leave that to them. As a teacher, right, let's say I'm, I'm teaching ninth grade. I'm like, listen, don't try to make up for the second half of eighth grade because you've been out of school since February or mm. the beginning of March. Don't try to make up for the second half of eighth grade. Keep their brains stimulated. Work with them in doing academic endeavors. Keep them thinking about and being challenged by different ways to understand their schoolwork. Right. I would avoid as much as possible I would avoid taking specifics from the book and attempting to to do it with them because you don't you look you you might you might get them to be able to complete problems and get the right answer but that don't mean you're helping hmm. you might actually not be helping there's no gauge again there's no gauge look well and and that's what I always say you know anybody who's anybody who's listening to this who's anywhere near our age right if you are in your 30s, hell, if you're in your 20s, take 30,000, <laughs> take 400,000, subtract one from it. Now, take your pencil and paper, 
and write out 40,000, right? Minus one. Now, show me all of the different shit that you're going to go through to turn 40,000 or 400,000 into 399,999, right? <laughs> Right. You about to start crossing out shit, <laughs> borrowing. crossing out some more shit, <laughs> writing out. You got to borrow. Borrow what? How come it's a 10 there? Why'd you turn it into a nine? Why? It's the one only goes right here. Why are you taking it away from all of these numbers? If you borrow it, do you got to give it back? Where did hmm. that three come from? The shit that you got to do to explain because what we're able to do, what we are consistently able to do, circling back, those of us who are good at school, we're able to give the right answer. We have absolutely no understanding of what we call numeracy, which is which is the, the component to literacy, which is being mathematically literate to understand units, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and what those mean. That, that's why that's why we struggle and 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 I've read that humans struggle to comprehend and depend upon what you read humans struggle to comprehend numbers and and not just the, the not the numeral because we can work with the numerals we can write the digits down on paper right. and figure out you know how to manipulate them but we struggle with conceptualizing right to understand numbers that are above ten thousand right yeah. you say hey this is uh ten thousand paper clips right is that is that gonna fill my desk? <laughs> you know, is or is that gonna fill this room? Hmm. Right, because we struggle with understanding how much that is. The reason why we struggle with understanding how much that is is because we were never taught numeracy. We're not number literate. We can tell you ten thousand. We can multiply it, divide it, add, subtract it, take the square root of it. We can do all that and figure out what the answer is. But we still can't conceptualize ten thousand. That's strange. So I don't have a I don't have a comment for that at all. I'm completely right. dumbfounded. Right. And and look, that's because most of us and it's crazy. So, you, you know, his dude, you know, with the degree in engineering. Right. And your ability, your ability to do math is superior because you've been through engineering school. There are 99 percent of motherfuckers out there in the world of made up numbers. But in terms of having a numeracy and still we are still struggling, we still struggle with the ability to conceptualize a large number. So what do the what do we do? What you've now put a person like me in a position of, well, you just, that's fuck it. <laughs> Go play video games. That ain't that doesn't sound helpful. Here's 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 an example. I'm just thinking so I'm playing Borderlands, right? And I want to know how damage works on a gun with all of these different modifiers that happen. Right. <laughs> you say, yeah. I want to know how it happens. So what I would do is I would take, we fire up the fire up the Xbox. Like, hey, look, I know this is tantalizing. We'll play in a minute. But here are all the modifiers. I want to know how much damage this gun is going to do against this type of enemy when it has these modifiers. You don't have to, you don't have to just tell me how much damage it will do. In fact, don't worry about calculating it. Just tell me the pieces that you need to know. Write them down. Or talk it out to me. Or put it on your tablet. However you go, well, my fault, tablet. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, however you're going to go about doing it. But use that as an exercise for them to start to be able to conceptualize numeracy, to become number literate. And, and hell, you're talking about time i'm switching a bit from math to science but all part of the same whole right now one of the main things that that we need is a scientific literacy and neil degrasse tyson love neil degrasse tyson man neil degrasse tyson said it because neither of his kids are, are scientists for those of you unfamiliar neil degrasse tyson head of hayden planetarium took over for carl sagan um one of the world's preeminent cosmologists harvard phd wrestler brother you know like that's my guy Mm -hmm. He said, while neither of my kids are, sci are scientists, they're both going to be scientifically literate. Because when you're scientifically literate, literate, the world looks different to you. So in just being able to understand and conceptualize coronavirus, very simply to know why it has that name to, you know, our tacky head president calling the shit Chinese virus. 
Why should you call it a coronavirus and not a Chinese virus? There's a very specific biological answer that also goes outside of just learning complicated biological terms. The coronavirus has to do with what it looks like when you look at it under an electron microscope. Did not know that. It's a type of virus, a coronavirus or crown, right? Corona, crown. Now, that's a reason why you should call it a coronavirus and not a Chinese virus, because <laughs> knowing that it's a that knowing that it started to proliferate in Wuhan is one important piece of information. But if you're going to solve the problem of that virus, knowing that it's a coronavirus and shit, throw out SARS. His mother's like, oh, SARS. Coronavirus is a SARS virus. Right. Right. Severe acute respiratory syndrome. It's like HIV and AIDS. HIV is a virus. It causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So there's some basics in understanding when you're scientifically literate. So you can look at these things and understand. If you're scientifically literate, then you can understand why it is racist for the president to call the virus a Chinese virus. Why it's not only racist, but it's unhelpful. So right. it's a it's a way that you can take current things that are happening and just flip it and, and, and say, here's here's a way to look at here's a way to look at that as a, as a problem in a way that makes sense for us in the real world. Makes sense. All right. Uh, this is not going to be as helpful as you think it is as a one time standalone. So we're actually going to have to ask for some feedback from folks, because I think if we get some uh, some feedback, we can actually dig into this on a multi level series joint. What do you think? Let's go, man. Unfortunately, and fortunately, I ain't got shit else to do. So <laughs> <laughs> we all stuck. And I and, and in all seriousness, I love being able to to help folks out um, and 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 more than willing to offer just little nuggets and insights. Um, I'm not going to teach an online class in this is, you know, but um, yeah, if anybody wants some insights and, and offer some feedback for sure, let's do it. Go into the show notes. There's a link there. You can send a voice message. We'll take every voice message on this topic and make sure Mo the Educator gets it and we can respond to your questions in the next episode. Let's do it. You on the hook. Yeah. Yay. I'm down. <laughs>